Assalamu alaikum students. In the previous class, we started the chapter the wise caliph, and we have read half of the chapter. And in this chapter, we read about Caliph Harun al Rashid that he was famous for his justice and wisdom. And we read that one day when he was holding his court, Qazi of his kingdom brought a difficult case to him. and that difficult case was actually a dispute between a rich man and a beggar and both of them were fighting over a beautiful white horse each one of them claiming and swearing that the horse was his so first of all the caliph asked and caliph asked for the statement of the rich man and what did the rich man tell him the rich man told the caliph that that morning when he was coming to the city gate he saw a beggar who was limping along the road uh, he was lame he was disabled so the rich man felt pity for him and gave him a ride up to the city gate but when they reached the city gate the beggar refused to dismount and claimed that the horse was his so now uh, we read more the next half So now there is the statement of the beggar. Then the beggar limped forward and said, "O leader of the faithful, you are the helper and guardian of the poor. You are a wise and just caliph. Have pity on me and save me from the cruelty and injustice of this rich man. I can swear that this horse belongs to me. You must be thinking like everybody else in this court." how a beggar like me can afford to buy and keep such a fine horse it is because of this horse that i am in rags whatever money i had i spent on this horse this morning as i was coming to the city on my horse i noticed this man walking along the road when i came close to him he stopped me and requested to lend him my horse for he was in a great hurry to reach the city of course i could not lend my horse to a complete stranger could i instead i let him ride my horse while i sat behind him as we reached the city gate he asked me to get down and leave the horse to him such a fine horse should not belong to a beggar he said now be off and don't you mention it to any one and even if you do nobody is going to believe you now sir i beg you to save me from this robber and restore to me what is my own so this is the statement of the beggar and and what is the beggar uh, telling the caliph he is telling him first of all he is praising the caliph that he is the supporter he is the defender of the poor and he is very intelligent and very fair caliph then he is requesting him uh, to be kind with him and uh, give him back his his horse and then he told him that like everybody you would also be thinking that how can i afford a beautiful precious horse and then he told that he was in rags because he had already spent all his money on his horse that is why uh, he seemed to be a poor man then he told him that that day that morning when he was coming to the city he saw the man the rich man who stopped him and requested him to give him his horse and of course nobody can give anything to a stranger so the beggar also didn't give his horse to the rich man but instead of this he offered him a ride a lift up to the city gate and when they reached the city gate the rich man said to the beggar that you are a poor man and you don't deserve such a beautiful fine horse so go away and leave the horse for me and if you tell anybody that this horse is your property nobody would believe you because a person like you cannot afford such a fine horse so this is all about the statement of beggar now read more 
I think this case is not very difficult to decide, said the caliph to the qazi. I shall decide it in a minute. Tell these men to place their hands on the horse one by one. Let the beggar do it first. Now, students, are you getting? Do you understand what the caliph is going to do? You all must know that the pet animals like the touch of their owner, their master. But they don't like the touch of any stranger. So the caliph is going to apply this trick. And he asked both the men to touch the horse one by one. When the beggar touched the horse, it winced as if it did not like the touch of his hand. But at the touch of the rich man's hand, the horse is noted and neighed with pleasure. So, when the beggar touched the horse, it showed its dislikeness. But at the touch of the rich man's hand, it showed its pleasure, its happiness. So, it showed that the rich man was the real owner of horse. This horse belongs to him, pronounced the caliph. Give the horse to its master. Then the caliph turned to the beggar and said, You are a liar and a wicked man. You tried to rob an honest and respectable citizen. You deserve severe punishment. But I shall be merciful and forgive you this time if you beg forgiveness of this gentleman here. So the caliph ordered to give the horse to its real master. And the rich man is the real master. Then he turned towards the beggar and told him that he was a liar. He was a sinful wrong man. And he tried to rob an honorable citizen. Then he told him that he deserved a severe punishment. A serious punishment. But he did not give him punishment. Instead of this, he was merciful with him, he was kind with him and told him to beg forgiveness of rich men. The rich man radially forgave the beggar and feeling sorry for him, took out his purse and gave him a handful of gold coins. This noble action of the rich man pleased everybody in the court. And what was the reaction of rich men? Rich men forgave him immediately. And not only he forgave him, but he also gave him a handful of gold coins. Means he gave him a lot of money. Gold coins, of course, are precious thing. So this noble action, this good deed of rich man made everybody happy in the court. So girls, you can see that a little kind action, a little good deed, please, everyone makes everyone happy. Now come to the board for the new meanings. So the first word here is guardian. Guardian is noun and it means protector, defender. Urdu meaning is sarparas, muhafiz. The next word is land. Land is a word and it means to grant as loan. Udhadena. The next word is robber. Robber is also a noun and it means a thief or a looter. And Urdu meaning is daku, ya chor, ya rahzan. The other word is restore. Restore is a word and it means to bring back or to reestablish. Bahar karna. The next word is winced. Winced is a word and its first form is winds. And it means to draw back. Peechhe jana ya jhijakna. The other word is snorted. Snorted is also a word and its second form or third form of snow. And it means to produce a sound from nose. And that is a special for an animal. And it means hin hinana. The next word is nade. Nade is also a word. And its first form is nade. And a nade is a whinnying sound. And this is a characteristic sound of a horse. So it means ghode ki hin hinahar. The next word here is wicked. 
Wicked is an adjective and it means sinful, evil, wrong. Urdu meaning is bura ya gunagdar. The next word is deserve. Deserve is a word and it means to be worthy of. Uh, here by is missing girl but by is here. To be worthy of and to be suitable. And its Urdu meaning is mustahit hona. Merciful, merciful is adjective and it means kind and Urdu meaning is meherban. And the next word here is severe, severe is an adjective and it means intense, serious and Urdu meaning is shadid. The last word here is handful, handful is a noun and handful means a quantity that fills the hand. It means mutibar. The Urdu meaning is mutibar. So, this is all about the word list. And now, what you have to do? You have to search for the words in the meaning. You have to look up in the dictionary. And you have to do the synonyms and antonyms of all these words in your register. So, do these words and their synonyms and antonyms in your register. And inshallah, I will see your registers. Take care.